Hi everyone, my name is Margaret Aligbe. Uh, I quickly want to share Swedish Institute scholarship tips to encourage someone. This is my second video, the first one I talked about some tips about it, but this particular one I want to talk about the SDGs. Yes, the SDGs or oh, the SDGs. Hmm. If you have not learned about the SDGs at this point, I encourage you to go back and go and do your research. The 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, its 169 targets, the 232 indicators. Please go back and go and read it. Yes, before I go ahead, I wanted to mention here that I got scholarship at my second attempt. So, if you've been trying, you are not getting it, please don't be discouraged. Scholarship is 50 50. Sometimes you put in the best application, you still don't get in. So, <laughs> I encourage you not to be discouraged. So, um, quickly, I wanted to talk the importance about the importance of the SDG in your application. If you go to the Swedish Institute Scholarship website, they mentioned specifically the importance uh, of the SDGs in the application. So uh, let me quickly check that uh, and uh, get you some insights on that. So it says here, it says, what is the SI scholarship for global professionals? It says here that the SI scholarship for global professionals aims to develop future global leaders that will contribute to the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and to sustainable development. The applicants should have a clear idea of how their education will contribute to the sustainable development of their home countries and region. Good. And this scholarship is funded by the, you already know that, by the Swedish Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So this specifically tells you that whatever you are writing, if you are, you are not paying attention to the indicators, to the goals, to the target, to the indicators of the SDGs, <clears throat> your scholarship may not scale through. Because it's not about the SDGs. If you see an application that specifically mentions the SDG, you, or, you can know, like, because there are specific words. There's how somebody would describe what the, the problem are re related to specific goals and specific targets that you know that, yes, this... This is a challenge. So, for example, Lagos has uh, Lagos has a, 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 a climate action plan. So, if you are writing about something about uh, you are living in Lagos, Nigeria, you are writing something about Lagos. That's these are some of the documents you can pick out to 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 mention specific goals, specific things you want to achieve. So, these are some of the documents, like specific specific states in Nigeria. They talk about problem they want to achieve related to the SDG. So you can use that as a foundation to, to draft whatever you want to solve. And then it will help you because if you, are, if you already know, oh, these are the goals, these are specific targets and indicators that, I, I, that I'm focusing on, it helps you to draft your application. Because you can't just say you want to solve zero hunger. Uh -uh. Which which specific which which particular aspect of zero hunger, and then which uh, which tells you about the targets? Okay, how do how do I how do I know that I've achieved this target to a, uh, to a considerable extent? Which are the indicators that measure? And this is what the knowledge you are going to get is going to help you to achieve. So I'm encouraging you if you have not read about the SDG. Don't just be stuck and writing the, in the, this time thinking, oh, you have crafted one of the greatest motivation letter in the world. Mm -mm. If it is stated specifically here, yeah, they mention the UN United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Do you know what that is? Hmm. Another thing um, I, want to, I want to say at this point is um, if at this point you've you are still dragging your feet about which course to apply, which course not to apply. Because maybe they require extra documents. I encourage you to spread your wings. Spread your wings or look for a school that don't, like there are some schools that they just tell you, okay, your application package of your transcript and your certificate is enough. So if you are still stressing about writing motivation letter, motivation letter or any extra document for those, for just admission and for scholarship, 
I encourage you to like, okay, maybe you should at this point, because of the, the time frame, because it's closing January 15th, I think, for uh, applic application and ranking of courses, I think, you need to quickly look for a course to maybe like this Christmas or you look for a course that does not require motivation later for admission. I quickly do that one and submit. Uh, you understand? So that they will process everything and then you know that that one is because if you don't, if you're not conditionally admitted, or you end up on the waiting list, your admission run, it don't finish, it has ended. So please, these are some of the things you so you don't get stressed out. Okay, you don't require English exams to study in Sweden if you are from Nigeria, for example. So if you don't you don't need to stress about that one, one way to quickly put yourself ahead is to look for courses that you can just submit based on your transcript and everything. Share you get so you can. You can quickly do that. Um, uh, also, another thing that can help you is about, about considering sustainable development is like if you are going to Sweden, each town has specific things they've achieved, awards they've won related to sustainable development goals. So, for instance, like Uppsala, Uppsala has won multiple awards as a sustainable city. So, I want to go and study in Uppsala. Apart from the department, apart from the school, apart from like the department and the school and what you hope to learn related to that specific goals, target and indicators you've already mapped out, you can mention that you are going to this city because the city is known for this and this and that. You could be going to uh, Gothenburg, Göteborg, you could be going to Oumeo, you could be going to Stockholm, you'll be going to Lund. So it's like it doesn't you have to be specific all these little little things it just helps it just helps so another thing about scholarship is apart from the swedish institute scholarship each university gives scholarship so like if any schools you choose as your first choice you have a chance at their tuition scholarship so this is another way to keep your like to help you like okay if you are apart, apart from the swedish institute scholarship there is also the tuition scholarship. So I'm encouraging you. This is what this video is all about. Go and read about the SDGs. In your organizations, the work that you've been doing, what specific SDGs are you related to? It's just that because many people don't read these things, they are lost about which SDGs. Like if you look at the targets and the just go, don't just read about the goals. Read further into the targets and the indicators. Then you begin to see signs you begin to see where the job you've been doing as a volunteer, where it has been fitting in. Yes, like you will not even believe. By the time you look at this thing, these things become clear. And then when you are writing your motivation letter for, for the Swedish Institute Scholarship, it becomes very, you will not be, it now becomes very, very clear. What is it that you are doing? And some people are complaining that they don't have enough hours. Some people have been working while they were in school. Your CWS that you did, like if you're in university, in Nigerian universities, we do something at CWS. Some people did it for like six months. All those things count. Uh, your NYSC. Some of you are just trying to use, your, you want to use only the way you've graduated. All those experience you had, you can add it to it. The important thing is you need to have uh, someone to sign in as a supervisor to back like those experience up. So, if you are lucky to have worked in an organization where they have, uh, they can sign in for you, as a supervisor can sign in for you, as a work experience, please consider it. So, I hope this is helpful. And as I've said, go back oh, and go and read about the SDGs. Don't stay in a vacuum and be writing and writing. I got the scholarship. So, I'm speaking from my own experience. I'm not saying uh, um, this thing is 100%. But it helps because it's on, this, on the scholarship website where they mentioned SDGs. So one thing you can do to help yourself is to go back to this website and look. There's the Study in Sweden Instagram page. There is the Swedish Institute uh, for Global Professional Verified Facebook page and Study in Sweden Verified, uh, Verified Facebook page. And then Study in Sweden... Their Instagram is also verified. These people constantly, like, they've been sharing tips for, for the, I think for the past two, three months, or oh, they're about, they've been sharing scholarship tip one, scholarship tip two. How many people have been reading it? 
How many people have been reading it? You are trying to apply for Swedish Institute Scholarship and you are not even following all these pages. How are you going to help yourself? So, good luck. And um, let me hear your questions in the comments and, um, and all the best in your application. Thank you for watching.